Yes, indeed. I mean, the police knew that there was a significant protest that was planned for today, uh, not least because Just Stop Oil informed the police themselves yesterday evening and told National Highways as well to uh, implement a 30 mile an hour speed limit on the M25. Well, anyone that's ever been on the M25 at rush hour would be lucky if they got 30 miles that, an that hour. That's where it happens, yeah, <laughs> indeed. But uh, if, you're, if you're listening to us on GB News Radio in your car at the moment, whatever you do, avoid the M25 because these issues are still ongoing. Ah, They've resolved some of them. Right. Some, some of those people who've gone up in the gantries, these are the main gantries that hold the digital signs yes. over the, uh, the motorway. They've gone up on there. Uh, some have been taken down, but others are still up there and causing disruption. And even once it's been cleared, the knock-on effects, as you know, take hours to resolve. Yeah, like a big elastic band that sort of you know, has to be undone. Um, let's just reflect on what they're actually saying about what they've taken. We uh, have got this clip from Louise, who is one of those protesters. I'm here because I don't have a future. <laughs> and you might hate me for doing this, and you're entitled to hate me. But I wish you would direct all that anger and hatred at our government. They are betraying young people like me. I would love to be there if they did their lawful duty to their own citizens. So, a rather tearful 24-year-old uh, Louise, not taking any responsibility for what she was doing, blaming the government, effectively. Well, yeah, I mean, if she's got an issue with the government, then many members of the public would say, take your issue out with the government, go and protest at Westminster, better still, take up activism, become uh, a politician, enter mm. the sphere yourself and try to make a change that way, rather than disrupting the ordinary life of individuals. What happens next? Because we remember this was uh, a, a sort of campaign that Extinction Rebellion carried out uh, at motorway junctions by sitting in the road. Yeah. There was high court action against them, which in the end was successful. Will we have to wait for the court cases to, to sort of feed through before this happens again? Yeah, unfortunately, this is going to take quite a, quite a time. Right. Over the weekend, National Highways, at the instruction, uh, instruction of the Transport Minister, managed to get an injunction to ban any protests like this on the M25. Well, clearly this is in defiance of that court injunction. Now, the importance of a court injunction is that that is not just a, a minor uh, infraction. You are effectively, you know, going against a court-imposed order. You can be held in contempt, contempt of court, yeah, absolutely. which we know then, of course, Mark, can hold a prison term, an unlimited fine. Now... Um, earlier in the year, we had the, the climate activist group uh, Insulate Britain. They had many motorway protests like this. They got injunctions for them, but it actually took quite a few months before that was brought to an end mm. until you went to court and then the court proceedings got knocked on, uh, people appealed, and then eventually some of those activists went to jail. By which time there's been a lot of other disruption. Um, as you say, a lot of people will be listening to us on their car radios on GB uh, News Radio. What is the estimate as to when this will be sorted out? Because clearly the police have physically got to get up to those gantries and get them down. I think it'll be sorted out just in time for rush hour this evening uh, when you'll be going at a very slow speed around the M25 again. Honestly, these things, Mark, as we know, mm. take an awful long time because the, the effect of all that piled-up traffic takes an awful long time to clear. And it's not just the ring road around London. It's all the feeder motorways Look, into this Everyone's trying, trying to get onto the A roads to, to avoid it, yeah. But, I mean, a lot of people think, how on earth have they managed to get up there? Surely they, these things are secure in some way to prevent members of the public sort of wandering up there. There will have to be some kind of access for maintenance crews to go up and to fix these signs that clearly suffer technical issues from time to time. But maybe this is something they'll look at, actually, about trying to make them a bit more secure, because clearly these people at multiple locations around the M25 yeah. were able to scale these gantries and cause the disruption they're causing.